Welcome back, fellow seekers of the unexplained. Today, we venture into the heart of Mount Rainier National Park, where a series of chilling mysteries have unfolded. From missing persons to encounters with enigmatic beings beyond our understanding, this is a place where the line between reality and the supernatural blurs. But before we dive into today's stories, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on our daily tales of the mysterious and supernatural. Now, let's delve into the enigma surrounding the disappearance of Sam Duball. Meet Sam Duball, a 33-year-old adventurer who embarked on a solo hike in the treacherous terrain of Mount Rainier National Park in Washington State back in October 2020. He was in peak physical condition and brimming with excitement for this expedition. Solo hikes are typically expected to last no more than a day, and Sam was no exception as he had been spotted on the Mother Mountain Trail Loop earlier that day, full of life and enthusiasm. However, as the day turned into night and night turned into another day, Sam's absence grew increasingly concerning. It was October 12, 2020, when he was officially reported as missing. Mount Rainier with its volatile volcanic activity and a history of hiking-related accidents and fatalities, is renowned as one of the most perilous places for solo hikers. Despite the risks, Sam was well prepared, equipped with a cell phone, camping gear, and extensive hiking experience. This was not his first solo adventure into the wild. His disappearance puzzled those who knew him, for he was no amateur. He was a seasoned solo hiker. Mount Rainier, a colossal stratovolcano towering at over 14,000 feet, is nestled in the Cascade Range, about 60 miles southeast of Seattle. Its breathtaking grandeur conceals a deadly underbelly of treacherous terrain and unpredictable weather. Sam Duval wasn't just an avid hiker. He was also a brilliant academic who had earned his PhD in medical anthropology from UC Berkeley in 2018. His colleagues, students, and friends described him as quick. Witted, exceptionally intelligent, and deeply passionate about the great outdoors. He had even begun teaching at Washington State's Anthropology University Department in June 2020. Despite extensive efforts by Mount Rainier park rangers, volunteers, and search and rescue teams, Sam remained elusive. Helicopters scoured the landscape from sub-alpine meadows and dense pine forests to rocky terrain and bodies of water, all in a desperate bid to locate him. It seemed as if he had vanished without a trace, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. Tragically, as winter storms began to blanket the region with snow and plummet temperatures, the search efforts faced insurmountable challenges. Sam Duball was now not just missing, but assumed to be lost forever in the unforgiving wilderness of Mount Rainier. Jeremy Foyer, a park ranger, had been working in Mount Rainier National Park around 2014. He stayed at the Sunrise Visitor Center on weekends during that time. One early morning, around 3.30, Jeremy was driving on a rocky, foggy mountain road. The night was dark, and he was going slow to stay safe. As he turned a bend, something caught his eye to the right. At first, he thought it was a person, but it didn't move like one on all fours. It stood up. Jeremy slowed down, going about 20, 25 miles per hour, trying to see what it was. He saw this figure stop at the edge of the road just as he was rounding the bend, as his. Headlights illuminated it. He realized it wasn't a person. It was a creature. This creature was about the same height as a man, around 5'8 to 5'11, and covered in hair. Its head resembled that of a German shepherd or timber wolf. The creature turned its head and locked eyes with Jeremy. He came to a stop, completely stunned. It wasn't someone in a werewolf costume. It looked very real. He could see its muscles under its fur, its chest rising and falling as it breathed, and its hot breath in the cold air. Its eyes glowed an eerie yellow. Jeremy's gaze slowly moved down, and he noticed the creature had human-like hands, with four fingers and long three-inch claws. It looked like a living werewolf, 
Even though that seemed ridiculous, Jeremy couldn't look away, and the creature started approaching his vehicle, walking on legs that resembled a human's, complete with knees, ankles, and large feet. Despite the shock, the creature continued toward Jeremy's vehicle. Jeremy's heart raced as he slowly eased off the brake pedal, intending to reverse his vehicle. But before he could do so, he felt a thud on the car's hood. He looked up and saw the creature, now only a few feet away, pressing down on the car's hood. It locked eyes with him, seemingly asserting dominance, as if to say, this is my territory. Terrified, Jeremy put his car again in reverse and began to retreat, keeping his eyes on the creature. As he drove backward, he could see the creature in his rearview mirror, its gaze unwavering. It was a surreal and terrifying encounter that left Jeremy shaken. He drove for a while, desperately trying to put distance between himself and the creature. Eventually, he reached a point where the creature was no longer visible in the fog. Relieved but still frightened, Jeremy continued his journey, tears streaming down his face. However, his ordeal was not over. As he descended to lower elevation, he noticed something in his rearview mirror. The creature had resumed its pursuit, this time on all fours. It chased his car for a short but terrifying 45 seconds before disappearing into the fog once again. Jeremy finally made it home safely, but the encounter haunted him. He eventually moved to Pennsylvania, leaving behind the mysteries of Mount Rainier. Since that night, he has never had another encounter like the one he experienced. Now, let's shift our focus to another tragic story, that of Matthew Bunger, a young mountaineer whose passion for the outdoors would lead to a devastating fate. After five years of service in the military, he left because he wanted to pursue a life as an avid explorer of the outdoors. Matthew Bunker loved trail running, mountain biking, and scaling mountains all throughout the Pacific Northwest. He was unstoppable. Unfortunately, Matthew Bunker embarked on his very last hike on Friday, June 26th, while descending Thumb Rock on Mount Rainier's Liberty Ridge route. Tragically, he was reported missing, and three days later, on June 29th, they found his body in a crevice. Elaine Laudreau, a park ranger who served at Mount Rainier National Park from 2005 to 2010, had some eerie experiences during her time there. On one patrol down the Paul Peak Trail on a beautiful spring morning in late May, she encountered something unsettling. There were no other hikers or people around. Around 10 in the morning, as she was making her way down the trail, she suddenly noticed a foul odor like that of death or a carcass. Elaine initially dismissed it, thinking it could be a dead animal nearby, not an unusual occurrence in the wilderness. However, the smell was strong and pungent, making her suspicious. Soon, her attention was drawn to a tree nearby, where she saw a doe about 30 to 35 feet up, slumped over a large branch. It appeared as though something had violently ripped it open, with its entrails hanging down the tree, as if it had been splattered. Elaine was horrified by the gruesome scene. Upon closer inspection, she noticed that whatever had killed the doe seemed to have grabbed its hind legs and forcefully slammed it against the tree, causing its innards to splatter up the trunk and then dangle from the branch. The brutality of the kill disturbed her deeply. As she stood there, holding her nose and surveying the gruesome sight, she suddenly felt a sense of danger. The once Noisy surroundings with birds chirping in a gentle breeze went eerily silent. Her instincts kicked in and she felt like she was being watched, observed, stalked. This feeling overcame her and she knew she had to leave immediately. Her entire body screamed at her to get out. She couldn't describe the exact emotions, but she sensed that something was not right. She turned to go back up the trail and that's when she noticed movement in the tree line, about 20 yards away. At first, she thought it might be a person, but as it began to parallel her movements, she realized that it was incredibly heavy and trying to be discreet. Fear and nervousness surged through her as she quickened her pace, trying to put distance between herself and whatever lurked in the trees. As Elaine quickened her pace, dread clawed at her. 
She desperately tried to make her way back to the main portion of the trail that Paul Peake connected to. Every step felt like an eternity, her heart pounding in her chest. The once tranquil woods now seemed filled with unseen menace. The silence in the forest grew deafening, broken only by the frantic rustling of leaves beneath her hurried footsteps. A cold sweat beaded on her forehead, and her breaths came in shallow, panicked gasps. She could feel something lurking nearby, just beyond her vision, and the unknown filled her with dread. Finally, she reached the safety of the main ranger station, her mind racing with terror. Elaine, her face pale and trembling, confided in her supervisor about the horrifying encounter. She expected understanding, support, but instead her supervisor's reaction chilled her to the bone. He stared at her blankly, his expression devoid of empathy, and casually dismissed her story. We've been having a bit of a bear issue lately. Just be careful, he said with an unsettling nonchalance, as if her words held no significance. His indifference to her ordeal left her feeling isolated and frightened. Elaine couldn't reconcile this response with the man she thought she knew. Her supervisor had always been level-headed, analytical, and rational. Yet his reaction now was anything but. It felt as though he was either trying to brush off her experience or conceal something more sinister. Could he be aware of similar occurrences within the park? Did he possess knowledge of something beyond explanation? These questions gnawed at Elaine's thoughts as she left the conversation feeling both bewildered and terrified. Stories like Elaine's raised chilling questions about what truly happened in those woods and why. What remains hidden in the depths of Mount Rainier National Park? Your thoughts and comments are welcomed below. And if you found this tale intriguing, don't forget to hit that like button. If you're new here, Subscribe and turn on notifications because we delve into mysterious and supernatural storytelling every single day. Remember, keep an open mind and I'll see you in the next video.